Hi everybody, Wrangler back again with another video about the AA3000 Plus motherboard by Hesse, uh, which is a reincarnation of the A3000 Plus prototype produced by Commodore. In previous videos I fitted this into my A3000 case and upgraded the firmware on the daughter boards to allow DMA between the PCI cards. What I'm going to look at today though is an area that I had identified from the start that I wanted to come back to and that is to try and get the monitor switcher working because Hesse's design, unlike the original prototype, actually had a RATA monitor switch built into it. Now the heart of that is actually on the motherboard which is why I've cleared out all the cards here. We've got two connectors here which the machine can switch between if we get the right software in place. So two 12-pin connectors so on the face of it, that seems slightly odd. Why have we got 12 pin connectors here at all, just for some video signals? Well, the thing is, how many pins do you really need? So you've got red, green and blue signals, that's three, plus ground, at least one ground, four, and two sync signals, horizontal and vertical. So that's up to, what, four, five, six connections already. So each side of the 12 pin connector uh, represents one set of video signals. But even then, that means we've got four, right? And we're just trying to switch between two, aren't we? Uh, and why are these jumpers on this connector here? What's that all about? Well, what Hesse has done is uh, quite ingenious, really. So this connector here brings in the Amiga video signals on one side, uh, and then the jumpers them through to the other side of the connector which is what can be switched between. Now that means that if you really wanted to you could take the jumpers out put in a cable here to some other video source and be able to switch between two external video sources but if you leave the jumper on then you can switch between internal video and one external source on this other connector. So the second connector here, the one that at the moment is empty, is the uh, video source from our retargetable graphics card that we're going to use. And I'm going to leave all the jumpers on because that's how I want this configuration to work, to switch between native Amiga, because it's jumpered, and the video card. So that's that side of it. The next question is, well, how do I connect up my video card to this connector? Uh, and what I did was to get hold of a simple IDC cable here, double-ended one with 12 pin connector on it. So that will quite happily go in here uh, and then on the other end all I have got, got to do is chop that off and connect those ends to the video card. Now uh, a friend of mine suggested that the right way to do this actually would be to solder the cable ends directly onto the video output of the video card and that way all the cables would be kept internal and that of course would work however I guess what I don't really want to do is to um, muck up this video card uh, and equally if I ever wanted to swap this out uh, it's a bit of a uh, difficult system to then desolder it set it all up again so actually I've got a, another idea which is to run this cable out of the case and I'm kind of hoping that it's thin enough that I can just loop it over the top of the case here without it um, obstructing the case too much. Solder it onto uh, a VGA connector there and then I can plug that directly into the video card and that way if I change the video card I can still use exactly the same cable with the, the new video card. So that's the plan, cut the cable, solder it onto the connector here, install the software and that ought to uh, get the monitor switch working. So next step, soldering. Okay so here we are set up to do some soldering. Yes it's just on a piece of newspaper, not an anti-static mat, but given that it's just uh, cables and connectors and things I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, so the first thing to do is going to be just to remove this end of the cable. I'm going to just leave a little bit here in case I want to use this for anything else. But uh, otherwise, let's uh, cut through this. 
There we go. Um, and then we're going to have to start separating these individual cables out a little bit. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to do on camera because some of it's pretty fine work. To connect up my uh, monitor cable, I need to have a circuit diagram. So what connections am I making? Well, as we know, on the main board, it's the odd-numbered pins uh, that connect through to the input onto the motherboard. Uh, I'll show you exactly where those are in the socket in a minute. But red, green and blue are on pins 1, 3 and 5. Ground is on pin 7 the vertical sync on pin 9 and the horizontal sync on pin 11. So all the odd numbers, as I say. Uh, but then where do they have to go to on the VGA connector? Well, red, green and blue connector pins 1, 2 and 3, and they're in that order, so that's quite convenient, the same way round as on the motherboard. The ground pin then connect, uh, from the motherboard needs to connect to various pins on the VGA connector, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 10, um, VGA standard has grounds for different for each of the different signals. For example, is in principle a different ground for the red signal to the green signal to the blue signal? Um, in practice, as far as I can see, most video cards just use a single ground and they're all connected together. Then we've got horizontal sync on pin 13 and vertical sync on pin 14. So just note those are the other way round uh, to the connections on the motherboard. Um, and I guess the other thing is, of course, just making sure which pin is which on the VGA connector because you're um, soldering onto the back of it rather than the front of it. So all the pin numbers are reversed the other way round. But this is the essential diagram that I'm following uh, is to connect up those six connections in the way uh, that I've shown there. So what does the finished article look like? Well, here it is. Uh, there's the IDC connector that I started off with uh, and the ribbon cable coming into my VGA connection. Now I haven't shown you soldering me soldering this up because actually it was really quite fiddly to do uh, and I must confess I am not the world's greatest solderer. Um, but there it is, that's the finished article uh, and this is what's going to allow me to connect up to the video card and as I said before Re potentially replace the video card without having to resolder anything. So the next step is to get this uh, into the machine and hooked up. Okay, so here we are staring right back into the guts of the machine again. Uh, let me just show you which pins are the odd ones. They are this row here, the one closest to the notch on the connector and closest to the gals here. Those are the odd pins, pin one, down in this bottom corner here, 1357 and so on all the way up. So they're the ones that uh, I have been soldering, uh, soldering the connector to line up with. So that's one part of it, that's done. The other thing we've got to take into account is this jumper back here. Now it's really difficult to see, sort of uh, obscured by the other connectors and things, but this controls how the monitor switcher works. It's a four pin connector and there are three settings for it. So the standard setting is that pins two and three of the jumper are connected together. And that means that what comes out of the sort of native VGA socket on the motherboard is the Amiga video coming across these jumpers here. So that's pin and pins two and three connected. If instead I connect pins three and four together, then what comes out of the VGA is always what's coming into these six pins here on my cable. Uh, that's not what I want either. What I want is the connector or the jumper in across pins one and two, which then makes it software switchable between those two sets of inputs. 
native Amiga over here, external video over here. So this jumper needs to move across to pins one and two, which I've already done here. So all that's left really is for me to now connect up the cable, put the card video, video card back in, um, connect that up, and it particularly helps if I do this the right way around. There we are, that's that in place. Uh, put the video card back in, connect it all back together, uh, and then we'll look at the software side of this because we need a little bit of software to get the monitor switcher working. So uh, I'll be back in a minute once this is all put back together and we'll look at software. Here we are back at the A3000 desktop. Uh, the video cables, by the way, are exactly the, as I had them before. So the monitor is at the moment directly connected to the Voodoo graphics card, not using the monitor switch just yet. So the next step though is to get the software working and there is a small package called Switch Control, which is uh, available on AmyNet that is what controls the switching process. So let me just extract that to RAM uh, and here it is. Now there are two different ways that the monitor switch can be controlled depending on exactly how you wire it up. The one we're interested in is this one labelled INT at the end, internal, not the external one. Uh, so that's what we need to use. Um, I'm just going to rename it switch control because that's a little bit easier on the eye. Um, and I, I think the easiest thing to do with switch control is just copy it to your C drive. So um, let's do that now. So that's that. Uh, this is just a really small program. What it does is to watch for changes in screen modes and when it realizes that it's a non-native screen mode it actually switches the uh, connection through one of the pins on the CIA chip as a, uh, a sort of indicator, a flag for when the uh, monitor switcher needs to, take, act, needs to activate if you like or deactivate. So we've copied it across the other thing we need to do is to get it running on startup. So the easiest way to do this is just to modify user startup. So let's get right to the bottom of that and just kick it off here by calling it. Uh, save that. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to test this now. Um, I need to therefore run around the back, hopefully for the last time ever, switch around the monitor cable. So how am I going to switch, just set them now? Well, the input into the monitor itself, I am going to connect to the VGA output connector on the motherboard. And the output from the Voodoo, I'm going to connect into my adapter cable. So it's two things I've got to switch over. That actually, when I do that, that will mean that the display we're looking at now is going to disappear because uh, the monitor will be correct connected until we get the software up and running. Will be connected to the native AGA, which isn't showing anything while I've got uh, a Voodoo screen in place. So it's all going to go grey. That's what we um, intend to happen for now, and then I'll reset the machine. And hopefully, what we should see when I reset it is that it will start up in native Amiga graphics and then when it gets to Workbench it will automatically switch over into what we're seeing now which is the Voodoo graphics. So now to switch the cables So there we are, the blank grey display of native Amiga graphics. Let's reset that. Um, and as you've seen before, I've got a few echo prompts in the startup sequence, just to say where it's got to in sequence. Um, that's an old habit of mine for when 
Uh, I've had problems with things going wrong in startup sequence, just really useful to see where it's got to when it hangs or something similar. So, but for these purposes, just helpful to see that it's actually connected to native Amiga graphics before it gets to Workbench. So there, there we are, there's the native graphics coming through. Um, now it's going to redraw into Workbench screen into Voodoo graphics. So there we are. Okay, so native Amiga graphics turned off. Let's see, do we switch over? Bit of a delay. And there we are into Voodoo graphics. So the monitor switcher has successfully switched between the modes there. Um, let's just give it another little test. For example, sysinfo, which in my experience always seems to open up a really odd screen resolution. Um, and I've had scan doublers that don't really work with sysinfo. So let's have a look at that. So that opens up perfectly happily. Uh, in fact, let's run a speed check while we're here. Perfectly happily now with a native screen mode. Um, so that's working fine. Quit. Does that get us back to the Voodoo graphics? Seems to be a bit of a time lag for it to actually connect back. It's a little bit slower than uh, some monitor switches I've used, but it, there we are, it has done the job. Um, likewise, uh, my old favourite Starstruck demo. Let's just try that. Again, that just runs in an AGA graphics screen. So there we go. It's very happily switching back and forth between the modes now. So I think we're pretty much there with this. Uh, relatively easy to set up. A little bit of fiddly soldering just to get the connections right on that VGA connector. But this is definitely uh, not a task for the expert. It's certainly someone who's just got a bit of skill like me in soldering but only at a really basic level can, can get this done. That brings me to the end of this video and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Join me again in the next video. Not quite sure what we're going to look at in that one or when it will arrive, but I'll be back with more videos before long. This is Wrangler. Thank you for watching.